Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have made a forced landing on a new planet beyond the outer reaches of the solar system. As they cautiously explore the jungle region, they hear the thud of huge feet and a terrifying bellow. Commander, look, what is it? It's a dinosaur, a prehistoric monster. It's coming this way. Get back to the ship, quickly. It, it sees us. It's after us. We've got to get to the ship before it tramples oh, us. Oh, would our ray gun stop it? There's no time to experiment. Into the ship. It's almost on top of us. Close the hatch. It's battering the ship. It's big enough to crush us like an eggshell. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Menace of Planet X. Say, do you hear that, Space Patrollers? That's the Terra City Express train. It's trying to get up speed on ordinary fuel. Not very speedy, was it? Now listen to that same train with super fuel in its tank. Yes, sir, that train's really traveling now because it's supercharged with super fuel. Now, without a good breakfast gang, you can't go very fast either. But with super fuel in your tank, why, you're supercharged. Here's how Buzz Corey gets up ahead of steam in the morning. He has a good breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. For taste, they're terrific. For size, perfect, because they both have that modern bite-sized design. So, gang, get off to a quick start in the morning the way Buzz Corey does. Eat a good power breakfast with rice checks and wheat checks and get supercharged. In the red and white checkerboard packages with the mysterious magic space picture on the inside. Rice checks, wheat checks. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure. Rumors of a strange planet beyond the outermost regions of the solar system have reached Commander Corey. Space pilots relate fantastic tales of a weird world, shrouded with mist, a world of glaciers and jungles, where monstrous beasts prowl and do battle. A space patrol agent has been sent to the area to check on the stories. But as the hours pass and the agent fails to return, Buzz and Happy blast off from Terra to search for him. Now, in the lonely void, billions of miles beyond the Pluto orbit, the commander and cadet Happy scan the viewscope screen. According to the astrogation chart, Commander, we're 12 million DUs beyond the point where Simmons was last heard from. You mean his last intelligible message, Happy? There was that garbled signal three hours later. Yeah, but Major Robertson wasn't sure it came from Simmons. Only about three words came through clearly. And whether it was from Simmons or not, it's worth investigating if it came from this far beyond the solar system. Yeah, whoever sent it must have been having hallucinations if they thought they saw a new planet. If there was one out there, we'd have sighted in the viewscope by now. Well, we can't be sure the message said a new planet had been sighted, Happy. All we know is a planet was mentioned. Well, do you think there could be one way out beyond Pluto? Well, the Space Patrol has more urgent problems than proving or disproving the existence of a new planet. In the last four months, more than 200 people have vanished, chiefly from the outer planets, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus. And so many spaceships have disappeared that, well, people are afraid to make trips out beyond Saturn anymore. It might be meteors big enough to blast a ship to pieces without leaving a trace. Well, that's one thing we don't have to worry about, Happy. This improved repair ray can deflect most of the meteors we'll ever encounter. Happy, there's something in the viewscope. Simmons' ship. No, it's too big. Cut on the electronic mass computer. Yes, sir. Now focus on that tiny dot at the edge of the screen. That's it. That's too big for a meteor, Happy. It's a planet. A planet nearly the size of Earth. Then those rumors were true. Yes. And if Simmons came out here, he must have seen it. Happy we're heading our ship for that unknown planet. Planet X. Planet X. 
a world so remote from the solar system, it has escaped detection by the most powerful space telescopes. A world at this instant emerging from myth and legend into reality. But there is one man who has known of its existence for some time and has kept it a secret. Over the years, he has built an empire on the strange planet, enslaving the subhuman natives and surrounding himself criminals and scum of all the planets. He is Commander Corey's arch enemy, Prince Barati. The towers of his huge, gaudy castle rise into the mists. Mists that swirl about banners emblazoned with Baccarati's dread symbol, a black falcon. Within the castle, the prince, accompanied by Dr. Malengro, a warped scientific genius, opens a heavily barred door and enters a room where a haggard figure slumps against the cold stone wall. Simmons, get up. He has been like that for an hour, Your Highness. I think he's in a coma. I'll get him up. On your feet! Take your hands off me, you big overdressed clown. You're like all the rest of the space patrol. Don't know how to act in the presence of your superiors. Superiors? Just because you can bully a lot of primitive natives on this backwash planet doesn't mean you're anything more than a big wind. No lieutenant of the space patrol is going to make a fool out of Prince Barcarati. Ah, I'll waste no more time on this stubborn fool. I think he came across my planet by accident. But, Your Highness, when he doesn't return, Corey will send a search mission after him. That's true. But we have nothing to fear. I'll never get close to the planet. We can destroy a whole fleet of space patrol ships with our controlled meteors. And in a few weeks, I'll have my own fleet of spaceships build up to the point where we can attack the United Planets. What will you do with Lieutenant Simmons? I'll have him taken to the glacier. He'll be put to work in the Endurium mines with the subhumans. But, Your Highness, he won't survive more than a week underground. Only the natives can endure the cold up there in the mines. Now, isn't that a pity? I only wish I could send Commander Corey up there, too. Come on, Malengro. Let's go up to the tower and check the view scope. Returning to the tower of his castle, Prince Baccarati sits before the control panel, watching an enormous viewscope screen that covers an entire wall. Sector by sector, the sensitive instrument scans the black void between Planet X and the solar system. Beside the prince stands Dr. Malingro, smiling proudly at the instrument that he's created. Your hour of triumph is close at hand. Millions will tremble at your name. Mercury, Venus, Terra, Mars, the Earth. Stop your planetary roll call. Look at this screen. Isn't that a spaceship? It is. It's a space patrol ship. But only one. It's Commander Corey's ship. See the insignia? Terra 5. You suppose he has sighted the planet? Of course he has. He's coming right toward it. This is the chance I've been waiting for. Switch on to meteor control. Ready, Your Highness. Now, focus the beam up toward the meteor belt. Now, Corey, you'll see how Prince Baccarati welcomes visitors who are not invited. Happy, this is incredible. Planet X not only has land, but vegetation, thick vegetation near the equator. Uh, remember those rumors about jungle growth and, and giant animals? Yes, but we're still too far away to confirm that. All we can be sure of now is that there's a desert region, a zone of vegetation, and ice caps at both poles. The meteor warning system. Look, there's a swarm of meteors heading right toward our ship. Oh, smoke and rockets, where did they come from? Check their trajectory on the view scope so we'll know how to avoid them. Yes, sir. They seem to be swerving out of that meteor belt we checked at 18 degrees high. Are you right, Happy? They're not following a consistent orbit. They're being pulled right toward us. Commander, we're in a collision course. They're converging on us, a whole flock of them. Here's where we test our super repeller ray, Hap. Commander, several meteors are coming head on. Is it working? We'll in a couple of seconds. Watch the view scope. Wow. They missed us. Look at their trajectories now. Super repeller rays scattering them in all directions. Yeah, but what made them come right toward us in the first place? Well, we weren't anywhere near their regular orbit. I don't know, Happy. But this might explain why we haven't had a reply from Lieutenant Simmons. Yeah. 
he didn't have a super repeller ray on his ship. No, he didn't. But there's a chance he may have landed safely on planet X. We'll circle the planet and keep calling him. Langro, what's happening? None of those meteors is taking effect. Can't understand it. It always worked before. Yes, on our dummy test ships, but this is Commander Corey. If he sends out a report on this planet... Your Highness. Yes, yes, Captain. Your what Highness. is it? The space patrol lieutenant, he escaped. Escaped? Uh, we were taking him to a spaceship to transport him to the glacier. He provoked a dispute between his guards and in the confusion escaped. Uh, fools! He'll be punished for this. Search every inch of the castle ground. But he's beyond the castle walls, headed south toward the jungle. Uh, in that case, let him go. With those monsters in the jungle, Lieutenant Simmons won't survive more than a few hours. Back to your post, Captain. I have more important things to do. Yes, Your Highness. Malagro, what good is your stupid invention? Corey's getting so close to our planet, we can't hurl any more meteors at him. He seems to have some defense against them. But there is still our robot control. We can neutralize Corey's controls, operate his ship from here, and can crash him in the desert. Ah, oh, that's too sudden a death. Suppose we force him down in the jungle. Yes. Lend him safely. Let him think he has a chance for survival. Not knowing about the giant lizards, the prehistoric monsters. We'll see how effective Corey's superior brain is against a hundred tons of brute force. Switch on to robot control, Malengo. Change our vector, Happy. I'm trying to, sir, but the ship won't respond. Oh, let me try it. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's strange. Feels like the controls are frozen. Commander, we're losing altitude. Adjust your seatbelt, Happy. We're going to crash. Yes, sir. Hey, what happened? We've just had the luckiest crash landing on record, Hap. You mean the ship landed itself? Yes, right in the middle of a jungle. Oh, I'm sure lucky the rockets cut out when they did, or we'd have been smeared all over planet X. Hap, look out the nose port. Those are birds. Yeah. Tropical birds. Just like on Earth. There must be a breathable atmosphere on planet X. Now, that's a break. We may be here for some time. Let's get out of the ship and look around. Oh, this planet is hot. It's like a steam bath. And these giant ferns must be 80 feet high. Now, I wonder if those birds are good to eat. Uh, I mean, when our ship's supplies run out. We've got emergency rations for six weeks. But we'll be able to repair the ship before then. Uh, hey. Commander, what's that? I don't know. Sounds like an animal of some kind, a big one. Yeah. It's coming this way. Smoking rockets, Commander. Look at that. What is it? It's a giant dinosaur. A dinosaur? Get back to the ship quickly. It sees us. Commander, it's it's after us. We've got to get into the ship before it tramples us to death. Would our ray gun stop it? There's no time to experiment. Into the ship quickly. It's almost on top of us. Close the hatch. The ship. Keep your fingers crossed, Happy. That beast is big enough to crush this ship like an eggshell. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Hi, gang. This is Captain Dick Tufeld reporting. Say, how about a briefing on space talk so you can talk like a regular space patroller, okay? Here we go. Hot rockets. Use it instead of old boy like a... Uh, Hot rockets, look at that boy pedal that bike. Here's some more Space Talk, gang. Supercharge. That means wade into a good power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks so you can have the zip and rip of a space patroller. And, gang, that's exactly what Buzz Corey wants you to do. He wants you to supercharge every morning. So just have yourself a hearty breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Good? 
Nope, they're terrific. And remember, they're the cereals with that mysterious magic space picture on the inside of the package. So, supercharge gang, get checks today. You just can't be without them. And Hot Rockets, are they ever good? Now back. And now back to our space patrol adventure, The Menace of Planet X. With the aid of Dr. Malengro, Baccarati sighted Corey's ship through a mammoth view scope in the tower room of the Princess Castle on Planet X. Using a robot controlled beam, Baccarati forced the commander's ship down in the jungle, where Buzz and Happy were attacked by a giant dinosaur, one of the monsters that inhabit the steaming jungle region. Now the enormous creature rips at the hull of the ship with all the force of its hundred ton bulk. Commander, it's going to tip the ship over. It's only a matter of time till it batters in the hull. Oh, if we could only blast off. Uh, maybe if we open the hatch and fire it at the dinosaur with a ray gun, it'd be like hitting an elephant with a fly swatter. If he'd ram that armored head of his inside the hatch and we'd finish. Well, what are we going to do? If the rockets won't work, we're stuck. Hey, wait. Our lighting system still operates. Maybe the super repeller ray will work, too. Brace yourself, Happy. The ship may lunge around a bit. Yes, sir. It's working. It's propelling him away from the ship. Wow, look at him go. Look at the plants out there. They're bending away from the ship like a strong wind we're blowing. Yeah, and the birds, they're leaving too. Huh? Oh, it's lucky you thought of that repeller racer. A few more blows on that dinosaur would have caved our hole in. Now, that ought to discourage our giant friend for a while. All the books I've read say that dinosaurs are extinct. I guess this dinosaur can't read. Yeah. Happy. Look out the viewport to the north. Looks like smoke rising up out of the jungle. Say, it does. A thin column of blue smoke. I can barely make it out against the mist. It's too damp here for a fire to start naturally. Yeah, but how else could it start? Simmons, maybe. Let's have a look. Uh, you mean go out there, sir? Uh, outside the ship? Of course. We can't find out anything sitting here. Oh, yeah, but w what about the things? Uh, the animals? We'll keep undercover and move as quietly as possible. Meantime, several miles to the north, Prince Baccarati watches the giant viewscope screen in the tower room of his castle. Mile after mile of jungle moves across the screen. Then, as the prince makes delicate adjustments, the vegetation becomes transparent, and the dark hull of a grounded spaceship looms up in the tangled growth of tree-high ferns. A smile of triumph is on the evil face of Prince Baccarati. Behind him, a door opens, and Dr. Malengro hurries in. Excellency, Excellency... There is trouble in the north, in the glacial region. What is it now? The slaves in the Endurium mines. They have taken over base camp number two. They have weapons and supplies. Uh, well, I'll order an attack immediately. They can't revolt against Prince Baccarati. May I remind your highness that you would lose most of your men in an attempt to regain control of the base camp? The rebels are in a position to fight off all opposition and sabotage the mines. Mm, you're right. Well, then we'll put Plan C into operation immediately. Plan C? You mean blow up camp number two? Of course! Any one camp is expendable, then its destruction will save the other two. We can handle the whole operation from this tower. The turn of a switch here, a cosmic explosive, and camp number two will bless the rebels to bits. But, Your Highness, some of your men may still be alive in the camp. Captives of the rebels. Well, if they're unable to protect my interests, they are of no use to me. First, we'll broadcast a demand to surrender. If they ignore it, well, they will serve as a lesson to others who try to oppose Prince Baccarat. I think I see flames through the undergrowth, sir. Right up ahead. Help! Happy to hear that? Yes, sir. Come in. There's a man coming toward us. That's a space patrol uniform, Hap. Come on. Commander. Commander Corey. Yes, Lieutenant Simmons. Hold him, Happy. He's about to collapse. Uh, take it easy, Lieutenant. Yeah, here. Lean against me. He's hurt. We'll carry him to the ship. I'll be all right, Commander. I heard your ship land. I, I managed to get a fire going. Oh, he saw it. Did you land in the jungle, too? No, sir. At a castle a few miles to the north. Castle? Uh, it sounds like I'm out of my head, but I'm not. Commander, Prince Baccarati is here on this planet. Baccarati? He's built up an empire here. 
Rounded up some of his old gang and made the natives work for him. Natives? On this planet? Yes. They're very primitive. Never advanced beyond Stone Age culture. Pacarati's forcing them into slave labor. Up north in the glacier region, he's got thousands working in the Endurium mines. That's where he was going to send me when I escaped. We'll take you to the ship, Lieutenant. When you rest up, you can help us fix the controls and we'll blast off. Yeah, something went wrong. Lucky we landed easy. That wasn't luck. Pacarati forced you to land, like he did me. He'll never get that ship off the ground. Unless we get to Baccarati. How far is this castle from here? Well, it took me six hours to get here. Commander, don't go near that castle. Baccarati hates you like poison. You'll end up in the glacier or worse. If you got out, Lieutenant, we can get in. And we can't stay in the jungle. How'd you escape? Through a tunnel in the wall, sir. It was used to haul materials from the quarry when the castle was being built. It's obvious you're too weak to go back with us. We'll leave you in the ship. Then Happy and I'll go on to Baccarati's castle. If you could... Wait till I rest up, Commander. It'll be a day or two before you're fit to travel. You'll be safe in the ship. Just tell us how to find the tunnel. We're nearly at the end of the passage, Happy. What part of the castle does the tunnel lead to? The sub-cellar. We'll work our way up to the main tower. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. light down here. Enough. Take those stairs at the end of the cellar. Yes, sir. Stand right where you are. Huh? Don't try to turn around, either of you. Don't try to use your weapons, or I'll be forced to use mine. This weapon in your back is a plastic gun. A plastic gun? If I pulled the trigger, you would be completely encased in a coating of transparent plastic. You couldn't move. Now, will you drop your weapons while you're still able to? All right. Drop your gun, Happy. Yes, sir. Very wise. You would be rather awkward to move as plastic statues. Now, step into the elevator. I'll turn you over to Prince Baccarat. There is no answer from base camp two, Your Highness. But they must be listening. Might I suggest one more warning? They had all the warnings they're going to get. Turn on the detonator ray machine. We'll blow our base camp number two. At once, Your Highness. Get moving. Go on in. What's the meaning of this interruption? I found them in sub-cellar five, Excellency. Well, well. Commander Corsi. Welcome. Now that you're here in my castle, there is no use wasting power. Cut off the robot control on his ship, Melandro. He's not going back to it. If you don't turn us loose, it'll only be a matter of time till a squadron of space patrol ships finds your planet and turns this castle into a pile of rubble. Oh, your threats don't terrify me, Commander. I can cope with any force the space patrol sends against me. Ah. Cadet! <laughs> Who dared laugh at Prince Baccarati? I'll show you! Oh, you. <laughs> I'll remember that, Baccarati. Careful, Commander. My guard can render you helpless with his plastic gun. I understand you're playing emperor again, Baccarati. You're using slave labor, forcing natives to work for you. You may not realize it, Commander, but you and the cadet are now slaves yourselves. I need replacements in the Endurium mines up in the Glacier region. Which reminds me, Melangro, it's time to destroy the rebels at base camp number two. Shall I turn on the detonator machine now, Your Highness? Yes. Commander, you will now see how completely I hold the power of life and death over my subjects. When I press this switch, more than a hundred rebels will be blasted to bits. Thousands of miles from this castle. Watch closely, Commander. Hap, jump the guard. Get away from that machine, Baccarati. Hey, Commander, Commander, they're getting away. Let them go. Right now we've got to smash this machine. Get the guard's plastic gun. I've got it, sir. Now let's get Baccarati. There they are, sir. They just turned a the corner. Down the corner, quick. Baccarati, stop. 
matter? They're climbing out a window. After them, Happy. There's a ledge out there, Happy. Swan, we've got to go after them. Yes, sir. Easy now, Hap. Wow, what a drop. And there's a river down there. Press close to the wall and work down the ledge. Hey, they're blocked. They can't go any farther. Baccarati, better give up. You'll never take me, Corey. Commander, he's got a plastic gun. So have we. And Baccarati can't fire without hitting Malengro. That's right, Corey. Commander, look at Malengro. Baccarati shot him. He's covered with plastic. Smoke and rockets. Baccarati pushed him off the ledge. His own partner. Watch this, Commander. He's pointing the gun at himself. Baccarati, don't be a fool. Get to him, Happy, before he falls off the ledge. Too late, Commander. There he goes. Golly, down into the river. Well, they fell just like statues. Well, I guess that's the end of Prince Baccarati. Come on, Happy. Let's get off this ledge. We've got to work fast. If we dodge Baccarati's guards, we can get back to our ship before dark. Lieutenant Simmons is asleep in the aft compartment, sir. Good. You could do with a little rest yourself, Happy. No, I'm not tired, sir. Commander, you know, I'm glad we got away from Planet X and saved those people in the glacier, but, well, I'd feel a lot easier if I knew for sure about Baccarati. I mean, uh, can we cross him off? That's what we're going to find out on our next visit to Planet X. An exciting preview of next week's Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hey, what's going on, young man? What do you mean, putt, 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 putt? I'm playing like I'm driving a surface car on Mars. Well, it sounds to me like you've got nothing but ordinary fuel in that tank of yours. You're just a putt, putt. You know what your car needs? Super fuel. Here, I'll put some in. There now. Gosh, my surface car is supercharged now. See you later. Yes, sir, Space Patrollers, for supercharging, it takes super fuel. And that holds true for you, too. Ordinary fuel for breakfast, you're just a putt-putt. Super fuel for breakfast, you're supercharged. That's why Buzz Corey has Rice Chex, the super cereal for breakfast. Rice Chex, crisp, golden, shredded rice biscuits in that modern, bite-sized design. The cereal that brings you a mysterious magic space picture inside of every package. Try it today. Delicious, bite-sized Rice Chex. The super cereal that helps to supercharge you. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy have made another visit to the mysterious Planet X. They have just landed in a robot ship, hoping to thwart an attempt to obtain Space Patrol secrets. As two men in work clothes approach the ship, Buzz and Happy wait with ray guns drawn. Keep behind the bulkhead until we find out whether they're friendly or not. Yes, sir. Quiet now. They're at the outer hatch. Don't move, Hap. Use your gas gun, Malengro. <coughs> Commander! Commander, I can't see! You fell right into my trap, Corey. This is your last trip to Planet X. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Trap on Planet X, when we check... Rice Checks and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! Special bulletin for boys and girls in Cleveland, Ohio and Syracuse, New York. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Stephen Robertson. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hunt Ralston again present... Space Patrol! Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC television station. Consult your local newspaper for time and channel. 
This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is...